Hey all, welcome back to Mudstorm's Hardcore Let's Play episode 4 and we're up to day 10. So, I spent a couple of days sorting out a few small things, I'll give you a quick look-see. First off, we dug down to mining level and I found a, a band, well not a band, a mine shaft, a cave system down there. So when we want to go caving, we've got ready access to a cave. And I also started on this. We're going to continue this in a minute and get this finished off because I want to have a decent farm to get plenty of wheat and seeds going for when I want to farm some animals, which we'll be working on shortly. Um, I'll talk more about this in a minute too, but for the moment, I just want to work on a couple of things. What you'll notice here is a couple of things. First off, I've got some gold and some redstone sitting here. This is to create my first day-night clock so I can start keeping an eye on what time it is. And then hopefully, we'll be able to make sure that we keep in track of this time and get ourselves into bed in time, or at the very minimum, just keep track of the time so that I know how many days are passing in the game. So yeah, so we're going to work on that for starters. I want to clear this off and finish the farm area. So I'm going to do this while you're watching. The um, I, I use the general format, as you can see, the uh, nine by nine section with a puddle of water in the middle, um, mainly because I just find this the easiest to get the most done and the easiest amount of time and all of the rest of it. So yeah, when we're on stone tools, that's probably the easiest way to go rather than trying to do massive lines and whatnot. I do know a lot of other people uh, that use uh, straight farm lines and put big things of water in between that. The only time I like doing that is with sugar cane, mainly because I hate running up and down and up and down rows. I prefer these big patches here where it's just very easy to get through all. Plus, I find that it's good for lighting up in this way because you can just do a block in the centre of the room and then you usually find that you're pretty safe there as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, this is the format we're going to use. We're going to decorate this room in the coming days too. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do it. I'm still looking to get enough resources to do it with. Obviously, I'm going to need to collect a bit more wood and I need to collect some more stone. What I'm going to probably do after this episode is spend a bit of time strip mining, a bit of time clearing out some flat land upstairs. Uh, the, the land that I started clearing before, I want to continue with that and get it cleared out. I'm aiming to have a 100 by 100 block area that I'm going to dig down to bedrock and have it as a completely open area. I have an idea for a little bit of a fun activity in there when I eventually get it done. This is something I've always wanted to do in all of my maps, um, is to have this 100 by 100 area. I've perhaps in one map come close to getting it actually fully dug out one time. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to just try and get that finished off this time. So we're going to see how we go with that. Um, it'll probably be something that gets done very much further into the future, but it is a nice little activity to try and do when we're running low on things to do and I want to try and keep a bit safer for a while or something like that. That being said, it's not the safest of things to do at times either because often I find because I'm digging out large areas of ground, we end up with a um, massive problem of mobs spawning here, there and everywhere. So yeah, I'm usually trying to be a lot more careful in the way I do that. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's something I'm going to aim for. So I'll probably show you in an episode or two the area that that's going to be. And then we'll, we'll sort of start probably just below ground level, like keep the, keep the, the, um, keep the roof on, as it were, for the time being, and just get down a couple of levels and light it up and then just start working from there. I did have plans to sort of put hoppers across the bottom of it or something to make it easier to collect the stone, but as you can imagine, 100 by 100 by 70 high roughly is a hell of a lot of blocks. So it's not exactly the easiest thing to collect for, and so we're going to have to really see how we go with that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, so this is our farmland sorted out at the moment. We're going to work on this a, a bit longer, get this planted, and then we'll go on to looking at the staircase, I think, uh, just talking about that and doing a little bit of mining, I think. Um, again, I want to try and get into some aesthetics in the coming episodes, so it's the sort of thing where I know at the moment everything's looking just patchwork and so forth, but obviously you do need a few resources if you really want to be um, doing some nice aesthetics, so I'm going to try and work on that as we go eventually, but 
for starters, we're just going to have to deal with it. And uh, yeah, maybe if you're commenting and that, you can give me some pointers or ideas about what you think would look good. But until I get to that point, it's just going to be the things that I can think of along the way. As I said, this room's probably going to be one of my first rooms to do, mainly because it's the first room I'm using in a hefty way. Um, and then once we get that one done, we'll sort of move on from there. Uh, yeah, again, I don't know exactly what we're going to do in here. I usually do some sort of line work or something with the andesite and some plain stone and some uh, brickwork stone. I like the chiseled stone in particular too, the, um, uh, the one with the swirling or whatever you call it. So yeah, that might end up being something worth doing in the near future as well. Uh, yeah, that we'll definitely do in the near future. So let's just dump some of this up here for the moment, get rid of all of this so that we've got an empty inventory. Uh, probably don't need access for the moment, I'm not going out. Actually, no, you know what, I'm going to go out and chop some trees first because we are not hugely full on wood. And actually, I want to run back over to the village and collect the stuff I left over there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I left over there, not a lot of stuff, I should say. There's a few things I left over there and I really want to get them collected before nightfall. So we've got probably about four minutes until nightfall, so not long, and long enough to run over there, but just not long time in general. Uh, this has been a very sort of back and forth map at the moment, I think, with uh, being a, a, a let's play, but it will eventually develop into something a bit more centered on what I'm doing. And like I said, I'm going to be cutting uh, the video more often as I get sort of further along and manage to achieve some decent sort of outputs on things. Try not to fall into me holes in the future. <laughs> That's going to be great. End a hardcore series because I fall in a hole. Um, but yeah, we'll try and avoid that. The, um, I'm just trying to think what else there is to sort of talk about at the moment. It's, it's kind of all the aims I've got really going for this at the moment. It's Again, I, I want to get through achievements, but I'm just busy trying to think through setting up, getting ready to go, um, and eventually sort of, um, yeah, addressing these achievements. A lot of the achievements that I'm going to address will be things like, for instance, the food one, like eating one of each type of food, I'm probably not going to do that until I think I've got basically every food available to me, in which case when I do, it'll probably it'll probably be a case of sort of sitting there with a chest and having um, every uh, piece of food sitting in the chest and then just going through and eating it one after the other, uh, which obviously has its own problems because wearing out your, in, in, uh, your, in, uh, your meat, uh, icons is not going to be the easiest either so yeah I'll have to see how that one goes maybe I'll just gradually take them with me when I'm doing things or mining or something and just gradually get rid of them that way but it's not going to be the easiest I can imagine to achieve uh, that or I'm going to have to start writing them up on boards or something that could be another way of doing this just uh, having signposts up and just recording which foods I've eaten so far and going from there um, so yeah Another thing I want to do at some point is have a full multiple coloured uh, farm at some point as well, multi wool farm. Um, yeah, I've seen one before, uh, I think it was Exuma Void that did it, that I find rather interesting because it basically forces um, the sheep to walk around in a circle and therefore you sort of see them go past a lot of uh, grass blocks and gradually build up on those grass blocks and so forth. So. Yeah, you might uh, might see me do a bit of that in the near future to try and get a little bit more happening there. Uh, so yeah, all right, we've got very little daylight left, so I'm just having a quick look around if there's anything I want to try and achieve here while I'm waiting for it to finish up on the first day. Again, I'm going to sleep. I'm not. I'm probably not going to sleep tonight. I'm probably going to go down into the mine for today. Um, yeah, it's sort of this area here is what I'm talking about with the hundred by hundred. So sort of that ridge there I want to keep just because it's part of my outlook of my my little abode and uh, yeah sort of over here is where I want to try and plan for this hundred by hundred now that being said if you're paying attention you probably notice that this is the direction of my mine but that's also part of the, the beauty of it because when I mine I do strip mining to begin with but once I get to having silk touch fortune three a beacon so on and so forth I'll place the beacon in my mind somewhere, probably about 50 blocks in, as you can imagine, and that's going to give me my 100 by 100. So the beacon will probably come up somewhere here-ish, maybe. But what that means is, too, I've 
A already mined out too high at the bottom, which, you know, isn't a big saving off of um, 70, but it's, a, you know, 100 by 100, there's quite a lot of blocks. And secondly, uh, I often mine upwards from standing position when I'm trying to clear out a massive area. So that will mean that I'll have mined, uh, I think it's about seven more blocks upwards. Um, so, or seven blocks in total, it's one of those. Uh, so that, yeah, that then again will be a significant portion of the blocks that'll go uh, be taken out basically. So yeah, lots of things to be considered there. Um, I'm also collecting more wood, yeah, so from here basically, I don't wanna go that way with it, I'm gonna be in this direction. So it'll be somewhere sort of from here-ish, I'd say. I'm gonna have to figure out the coordinates at some point, but we'll get there. Um, yeah, so the, uh, digging the dirt, I'm, I'm, as well as flattening that land out, uh, I'm getting the dirt because of obviously more farms. So we're going to get there eventually and have a lot of different farms going on. So we're at night time again, like I said, and I'm going to go down into the mine this time, but I'm just going to dump off what I can in here. I'm probably going to need more chests, uh, to be honest. So we're going to make another chest and put a double chest over here. And what we're probably going to do is make this, uh, start organising these a little bit. Not enough by far, um, but we're going to start organising them so that we've got blocks in one. So when I say blocks, things like cobblestone, gravel, andesite, uh, dirt, granite, these kinds of things, uh, I put in the one chest so that basically they're easy to find when I want them. Um, and otherwise I'm putting in everything else into the main chest. So these are the, the use of useful items basically. I'll take that back out because I can put that down. And yeah, so that's all a bit of fun there. I'm just ha where did I get that? Oh, I must have that gold in the chest already, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm just having a look which wood I want to take down with me. I'm probably going to take a half a stack, a quarter of a stack of this with me just because, actually no, I'll take this one because I know I can get more of this nearby. And that should be about everything I need to take down to my mind for the moment. I'll take that because I'll make another stone shovel in a minute or two um water yes i think that's it i'm also going to look at making a very quick way up and down eventually for the mine uh the bubble columns are awesome as far as i'm concerned as far as getting somewhere quick uh so i'll definitely be working on those when i can get a chance to um that's obviously going to be limited to when i get some what do you call it magma blocks and um, soul, soul sand. So yeah, we'll, we'll get there eventually with it though. And I sort this out in between uh, episodes as well, so I'll try and make this look a lot neater, a bit easier to track what I'm doing. Um, all of those things are going to end up being farms eventually as well. Uh, I want to have a bit of a farm for everything. It's probably going to have to be layered along this stairwell or something gradually because I don't think I'm going to have much of a way to do it any other way. I'm still trying to find a way without having a flat area to make stairwells interesting in the sense of um, that they have, uh, what do you call it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, landing, without having a landing, I hate having a break up in my stairs, so I'm trying to figure out a way where you sort of, you're on a staircase and you want to walk that way, but you're not, I mean you've got to clear these two blocks, but to have this block something interesting, maybe a, a slab is going to have to be the way, but I've never really sort of got to the point where I've really heftily um, gotten that, been happy with what that is. Hey look, lapis already, that's awesome. So there's our first lapis as well as we approach a bit over halfway through the first episode, so that's cool. And I'm going to do this to one, two, three, four, five. For those who don't know much about strip mining and lighting levels and so forth, um, I haven't checked this recently. I've been doing this the entire time I've been playing Minecraft and it's never led me wrong, so I've just sort of stuck with it. But years ago on beta, I think it was, I was checking out light levels and I figured out that the perfect way to make sure that your mine is perfectly safe for a big open area is to do four blocks in between every two torches and do this in a grid pattern. So this will be one, two, three, four, and then that's the fifth, so that's where the torch is gonna go. Um, I've been doing this, like I said, forever and a day, and it's never once led me wrong. So I tend to do this a lot when I'm starting off just to get it started, and then when I'm clearing more so, I'll do it as well. Um, this is just basically me at the moment, just clearing a space so I've got a bit of space to work with, and then I'll know that I'm 
ready to go for my strip mining. So I'm still debating on how I want to do this. I'm going to see how it looks compared to what I've got set up in a moment. But the uh, strip mining, I often do a two by two tunnel just for my main tunnel or something so that I know where I am um, when I'm looking at it. And then I often do, uh, yeah, I do the, the typical sort of method where you do um, dig one block and then go two blocks over. Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned in the early episodes, but I'm down on level Y equals 10. The reason I do it at this level, I know a lot of people do 11 or 12 um, to uh, be above lava, basically. I don't uh, for two reasons. One is I don't mind the lava. I tend to harvest it and use it for cooking things and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, it's not the worst in the world to do that kind of thing, I think. And the other thing is I know they, they, they want to avoid running into it for the sake of... Um, You've got to clear it up and that. I usually just dig around it and so forth and then it's there for later on when I want to do some obsidian or something like that. So yeah, it's sort of one of those things where it's probably a little bit slower going compared to what other people want to do, but I do do a lot of it. So it's sort of like, yeah, I, I just, I don't mind. That's just the way I do it. Um, and then that's the other thing too, I suppose, like it's the strip mining to me is just, it's, it's therapeutic <laughs> and I'm not going to go for thousands of blocks. A lot of people... I hear uh, sort of talk about going for a lot of distance when they're doing their strip mining. I only go for about 200 blocks or so, and then I come back. I usually move over the two blocks and then come back on a new run. That way it's sort of like really giving me a chance to, to get going in that sense. So what I think I'm going to do is, because I want to move in this direction anyway, I think I'm going to do a three wide tunnel. I've not done this much before, so it's sort of all new game at the moment, but we're going to go for it. We're going to do a three wide tunnel uh, just for the fun of it. So obviously, again, with a stone pickaxe, going to take quite a while to dig through all of this. Uh, probably, maybe next episode, if I've done enough strip mining, I'll probably have enough iron that I'll start working on uh, using an iron pickaxe to speed things up. Uh, or, if i found enough diamond by then, I'll use a diamond pickaxe. Uh, I don't mind getting onto the, the diamond as soon as possible, usually, but it's got to be within reason for... Usage. I don't want to be chewing through diamond pickaxes before I get ahead quite a bit. So usually I'll probably wait until I get about, I don't know, maybe eight diamond or something before I really get into the diamond pickaxes. I'll make one early, definitely, mainly because if I find obsidian or lava, then I can do my obsidian very early and get into the nether. But yeah, I won't use it a lot until I'm really sort of progressing. The other thing is too, I want to get through the end get an enderman farm going and that way I can repair things quickly and easily when I've got some mending books and whatnot. But this is again of course all reliant on the fact that I'm hoping to get um, the villages up and going soon as well. This is something I'll probably start off on uh, off camera just to get them um, set up for breeding and whatnot. I don't really want to spend a lot amount of time on camera doing that because I just think it just it just gets boring after a while. So. Yeah, we're going to... Oh, that was the worst. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to sort of see how we go with that one, I think. But, yeah, anyway, that's it. Um, you'll notice I went and got the granite. This is because I use granite and diorite to fill holes, basically. Uh, because I don't build with them much, uh, not even the polished forms, I just, I just don't like the look of them. Um, I tend to use them when I'm mining to fill holes rather than using cobblestone in that. Now, cobblestone, obviously, massively in abundance, so it's sort of like, well, who cares? But, um, yeah, it's just to try and keep it looking a little bit nicer in the mine still uh, because it's not cobblestone sitting everywhere. And two, just because I can waste those blocks and get rid of them that way. And then I'm not choking up chests with them. Uh, I will eventually make a bin of some sort uh, with a dropper and so forth to kick items into lava and stuff. But that's probably a little bit further down the track when I get to a point where I think like, yeah, okay, I'm ready for that or whatever. I'm noticing now too, we're getting through the night. We're not quite there yet, but we're definitely close to daytime, I think. So this will be probably close to the end of this episode as we sort that out, but that's gonna be my mining tunnels now. So what I'm probably gonna do is, cause I wanna maintain this wall, I'm gonna dig there and go down a few hundred blocks and then I'll be digging there. As, you, as I said before, every two I'm gonna go. So yeah, and this will hopefully mean that I get a lot of diamonds. And that's another reason why I tend to go for um, doing level 10 as well. I know a lot of people like you can get diamonds at level 11 and 12. It goes up to 17 or whatever it is, or 20 or something, I don't know. Anyway, uh, but the point being that I've found that you do find diamonds that are sort of in the floor of level 10. 
Um, so when I'm digging this and then digging upwards, like I said before, going up that way, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that I'm finding all of the diamonds in the area, not just the few that are between 11 and 12 or something like that. So yeah, that's what we're going to aim for. I think that's going to be uh, the bulk of sort of what I'm going to be doing for the next, I don't know, maybe hour or two. So next few days worth of gameplay. Once again, this was day 10 of the, of the map. Uh, I'm looking to get up to probably about day 14 or so for the next episode so that I've done quite a bit of mining, quite a bit of resource gathering, like I said, some wood, a lot of stone and so forth, and we'll probably spend the next episode trying to deck out some decorative features on the, uh, the base here. Uh, the particular, I want to I want to try and work from the door inwards, basically. I want to try and keep it in a process so that we get through and we really start to see the base develop gradually as we go. I don't see the point in doing it uh, room by room because I just tend to lose track of things and I don't plan hallways effectively and things like this, and then it just ends up, looking, you know, like a patchwork of rooms all together, basically. Uh, so yeah, we're going to work on that, but. I think this is about the end. I'm just going to get this coal and I'll run back upstairs to double check everything up there. Like I said, I think this is daylight now. I think we've just passed the morning, so that's cool. And I'm going to probably check the farm just for wheat's sake and then we'll call it an episode there. So just give me two seconds to drop this stuff. I'll take that upstairs. They can stay there for now. That ought to do fine for that. So let's run upstairs. And just while we're going past that, I'll show you where the cave was. I've blocked it in, but I can see into it. So this, this gap in here is where that is. So there's a cave that goes in both directions. Um, there's an up section over here or there or something and so on. So this is where we're going to move into that cave when we want to start caving. I've lit it up and walled it off for the moment. So there shouldn't be any risk of <coughs> a creeper coming in at me or anything like that. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we go. So let's get some wheat sorted. I had some wheat grow the other day, um, the other day, just after the, the filming the other episode, and unfortunately it was at that stage and not the yellow stage, and I broke it before it was ready. But anyway, that's alright. So, the wheat farm is getting there, the seeds are obviously getting there, which is good because then I'll have plenty of that for that. Like I said, I'm going to sort that out before next episode, and we are definitely on today, uh, I think it was day... 12 actually, did I say, I said day 10, I have to double check, I think I'm on day 12 or something, so I'll, I'll let you know at the start of the next episode which episode, which day we're up to, but yeah, I'm going to call it quits there, we're going to gather a whole lot like I said before the next episode, and then we'll see how we go from there, so I'm going to call it a quit here, have a good day, leave a like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, whatever you like to give me encouragement would be wonderful, and otherwise we'll see you all next episode.